Hello everyone. This isn't my usual way of coming to you, but I wanted to let you know kind of what we were doing in terms of in-person worship services over the next few weeks and then the reason for it. Um, I have sent this note through Susan to the congregation, but I also want to read it to you. Uh, I don't want this to sound like it was a distant, hollow decision that was easy to make on behalf of Council and myself. In fact, even now, most of us are pretty torn about which is really the right choice to make, but in the end, given the circumstances currently in the province and in this community, I think this has to be made. I don't know if the choice is going to be left to us much longer anyway. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll read you this, what I wrote, um, and maybe say a few things after. So. As most of you have heard, we have chosen to cease in-person worship for the time being in light of the growing COVID-19 numbers, both in the province and in Leduc. I know that this was not mandated by the province or even suggested by HS, but we have chosen to do so for a couple of reasons. Our Bishop, in a letter dated on November 12th, strongly recommended that we stop in-person services for the time being. He felt that due to safety issues surrounding COVID, we needed to protect each other to the best of our abilities. But another underlying issue was the fact that as a society, there are still many who are not taking the pandemic as seriously as they should and are contributing to the rise in, in numbers. As a church, it is incumbent upon us to do the right thing and act as God would want us to in this difficult time. We want to uphold the path forward that is safest for everyone not just the one that is perhaps the most comfortable. I wish we could be back in person. And although I'm quite confident about our practices within the church, we have no control of the practices outside the church, which makes any and all gatherings risky. Even during the time of Luther and the bubonic plague, Luther had some strong words for those who chose to act against the common good. As a church, we can show the world that protecting each other is the best way forward. If I, if I make it sound like this was an easy choice, it wasn't. It was agonizing and it still is. I know that the mental and spiritual well-being of many are wrapped up in the faith life, in their faith life, and to deny a part of it is a hard sacrifice to make for many. But it is my sincerest hope that by making it now, we can help speed the way to safer days ahead. In the meantime, please continue accessing the online content. We will soon post a number of opportunities for Advent in the following weeks. And remember to continue supporting the church. If anything, in this time of COVID, the workload here at the church has increased considerably. And that work is also considerably more stressful with all the various protocols and restrictions. Trust me when I say that walking into a hospital to offer the commendation of the dying to someone whose life is almost over is never easy. To do so right now is even more stressful. So please remember to support us so we can continue delivering content, ministering as we are able, and visioning for what the next number of months will look like here. So peace be with you all. So do keep us in your prayers, support the church as you're able, and we'll stay in this together I'm sure none of you thought we'd still be doing this almost nine months in, and the fact that we've gone backwards on this is disappointing. But maybe there's still hope. I mean, there's always hope. We know that. And one day this will be done. But when I say maybe there's hope, I mean it more in the short term. Maybe things will turn around. The hope is, of course, that it'll turn around in time for Christmas, but we don't know. Be that as it may, as I was driving, running an errand late, earlier today, I thought of one thing which we all need to remember and which will probably come up in a number of my Advent sermons, services, but this is a little taste of where my thoughts were going. Regardless of what happens over Advent and what our Christmases might look like collectively, remember that there's actually nothing that can take it away from you. That all of that Christmas although it's so very important to so many of us, and for good reason, 
that can never be taken. We may not be able to gather. I hope that's not the case, that we can't gather or even gather with family, which would be the worst case scenario. That would be very tough for a lot of us. But Christmas is about one thing as we, that we as believers hold to, which is that Christ has come into the world, that God has entered in and has changed everything. God has entered into our lives, into our suffering, into our everyday affairs, because God has loved us that much. And it starts on the, in the Christmas story, that wonderful, blessed miracle of Christ's life. That can never be taken, not from any of us. So Christmas will look, and Advent will look very different, regardless of what happens now over the next couple of weeks or a few weeks. But remember, that can't be taken from you. Nor can the music, nor can some of those things that we do to celebrate the season, reading the scripture story, calling friends, baking cookies, whatever it might be that helps us, <clears throat> those things too will always be ours. But the main thing, as Bishop Ron Mann used to say, can always be the main thing. Christ has come for us. Christ has come in our midst and has claimed us in God's love forever. So let that rest in your hearts and give you comfort for the days ahead. I didn't actually mean to do a little minor sermon there, but you know what they say, give a pastor a mic and he blabbles forever. Anyway, we will chat soon. Bye for now.